Well, it's Wednesday time again for some Bible study. This is Pastor James Kautz from Evangel Church, Evangel Assembly of God, 1045 Northwest 1st Avenue in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We trust that everyone had a great 4th of July weekend, and of course, Monday was the holiday. We had a great time at Evangel. We had uh, a great service on Sunday, and then right after, we had a time of a fellowship with some food, some sandwiches, and some cake, and and all kinds of other things, you know. And we also celebrated an anniversary of Art and Janet Tenney, a couple of our church, uh, 67 years. And uh, it was just a great day. And uh, then, of course, uh, Monday was a great day. But here it is, Wednesday, time for a Bible study. We're thankful for our country. We're thankful for the United States of America. And we pray that God would truly, as we uh, say sometimes in the song, God bless America. Uh, as you know, we have been in the book of Hebrews, and we pretty much finished that, and we had a great climax talking about faith. Faith is a great element in the book of Hebrews. And uh, I thought what we were going to do, what we would do, is uh, we finished Hebrews, but we, we haven't really finished faith. Let's talk some more about faith, and we'll go into different parts of the New Testament and bring out some aspects of faith. And uh, I want to start with a great faith book uh, it's not a study of the book itself, but about what it says about faith, the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the church at Rome. And, uh, you know, if there's a theme, we could say that is justified by faith. The book of Romans says we're justified by faith apart from the works of the law. And we're going to get right into that in just a moment. But first of all, let's uh, have a word of prayer and ask God to bless his word and to help us and meet us with the needs and the difficulties and the problems that we know about. Perhaps you know people who need special prayer. You bring those people before the Lord with us right now as we pray together and as we join together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be together tonight and that we can have this time of talking about faith and we can go into the book of Romans. We thank you for the book of Hebrews uh, that we've talked about. We didn't deal with every bit of it, but we've talked quite a bit about it. And we ended up talking about uh, what it says about faith. And we want to talk some more about faith. And, and we thank you for this Paul's letter to the church at Rome that says so much about faith as we go into it tonight. We ask you to help us to anoint your word, help us to interpret it properly and to apply it to our lives and to let it make a difference. We thank you for this past weekend and for celebrating uh, the anniversary of our country, the 4th of July. We know that uh, America has many problems, but America has been a great land and we believe that you've raised it up to do great things and we'll continue to do that if we would take time to honor you and to put you first in our lives. We pray that you would be with all these that are with us tonight who have needs and problems and difficulties and troubles. And Lord, you know, just reach out to them and be their friend and be their helper in time of trouble and meet their, meet their needs, Lord. Be the great physician and the one that stays close to us. We thank you that we're not alone, but that you walk with us. You said you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. And we can bring all of our troubles in, into your presence and Cast our cares upon you because you care for us. So bless your word tonight and make it real to our hearts and we'll give you the praise and the thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And if everybody would please say a good amen, we would appreciate that. God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, being with us. As we have said, taking time for this Bible study. You know, uh, just before we go into Romans, I do want to call your attention back into uh, Hebrews to a uh, two verses of scripture uh, that are kind of what this is all about and, and, and where we ended. Uh, the first one is in uh, chapter 11, uh, verse 1. It says, faith is the, remember this? We talked about it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then, in chapter 12, there's a great uh, verse of scripture. Uh, it says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. How do you like that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He was successful 
he accomplished that. We're going to talk a lot about Abraham when we get into the book of Romans and how that Abraham was the one who gave forth the people of Israel. And we're going to point out how that Israel had uh, two basic jobs. One, to be the receivers and the caretakers of the word of God. And two, to bring forth the Messiah, who, who we know is Jesus, who the book of Hebrews says is the author and finisher of our faith. And uh, we're going to see how that uh, God didn't mean for this just to be for Israel, but for Israel to come from Abraham and to be <clears throat> the people of God uh, because of that, but they had to be people of faith. So, so Paul's going to talk about faith and how that is the way that everybody can become linked in with the family of God and be the people of God, uh, not because we go back physically to Abraham, but because we go back spiritually to Abraham. Okay, in the book of Romans, if you'll look at the first chapter and look at verse 16, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek or to the Gentile. He uses the word Greek to apply to anybody who is not a Jew, talking about all Gentiles. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The word faith, the idea of faith is something you can talk about over and over and over and on and on and going all over the Bible and you'll never quite get it done, but you don't have to because you see, uh, just to get into it at all, it starts to work and it doesn't matter if you get more, uh, it, it doesn't work exactly like normal things do in terms of a quantitative measurement. It's a qualitative measurement. The quality of our faith, not, not starting with us, like the quality of our ability to believe, but the quality of our faith. Who we believe in the gospel of Christ. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the power of God for salvation. Uh, and it's the righteousness of God. See, not, not our righteousness. Not works of righteousness which we, which we have done. It's not our righteousness. It's the righteousness of God revealed uh, through our faith. And the people who are justified and uh, made whole and made complete by God, are justified and living by their faith. See, we trust God. We have God in our lives, and we depend upon the Lord. Now, there's so many things that uh, that we could talk about and uh, and will talk about, but uh, I just want to hit some high points to get us started tonight. If you go over to chapter 3 in the book of Romans and go to verse 20, it says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Now, by the law is the knowledge of sin, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the, listen to this, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but we're, we're justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ, that is in Christ Jesus. Now, now we're going we're gonna to read a few more words here. This, this, is, this is powerful material. It's, it's, it's complex. It's strategic. It might not be easy in the initial coming into his presence, but we don't have to fully understand it and figure it all out. We have to begin to experience it and know that it's a gift from God. It's a gift of God. It's ours, but it's also his. We have to have faith. We have to believe, but it comes from him. It's so difficult to understand how this works. You know, people say, well, if it comes from God, then what's my responsibility? Or if it's my responsibility, what does God have to do with it? 
Is it God saying, I've got to believe everything he says, and if I do, I'm okay, and if I don't, then I'm not okay? Well, I understand it's a little bit complicated, but, but it'll start to come to you as you begin to read the Word of God and as you experience it. And you don't have to know it all. You don't have to understand it all. You know, like one man said when Jesus said that he could be healed if he would believe, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And Jesus didn't rebuke him or say anything against him. So the righteousness of God is by the faith of Jesus Christ. See, And we're justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And God has set him forth to be a propitiation, a sacrifice, through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the patience and forbearance of God. See, I say at this time, Paul said, I declare his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believes in Jesus. How are we accepted? How are we justified? How are we made okay? We're justified by believing in Jesus. So there's nothing to brag about. It. All, all the boasting is for Jesus. By the law, by works, no. If you want to talk about law, he said it's the law of faith. Now faith isn't really a law. It's a principle, you might say. But he said, you want to talk about the law. See, these people were, were believing these descendants of Abraham that if we keep the law and we do everything that's in the, the books of Moses uh, and follow that, then we'll be acceptable. But it's not, it's not that way. It's not that we don't obey God and do the things that God wants us to do. But, but we are not saved and justified because we can do these things. So he comes to a great conclusion and says, Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, what he's going to establish by talking about Abraham in the next chapter is this. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles, the, the non-Jewish people? Yes, of the Gentiles only. It's one God, and he justifies Jews and Gentiles, the descendants of Abraham and those that are not descendants of Abraham. Now, the law wasn't bad. It was from God. And he said, do we make void the law through faith? No, he said, we establish the law. See, the law would have no purpose if it didn't, up in the faith, didn't end up in the faith way, if it didn't end up in the way of Jesus, if it didn't end up in the way of the gospel. See, if it went on the way it was with Moses, it didn't change. And a lot of people didn't want it to change. See, Paul was like this at first. But then he realized he, he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus and found out that, that the law has to culminate in the gospel, which is the good news that Jesus saves. See, Jesus saves. So then when, when we get into chapter 4, and, and we're going to have to go uh, easy here and, and go kind of slow and, and maybe approach this from seven different uh, standpoints and uh, this whole book is really a great book about faith. This was a great book that uh, changed the heart and life and attitude of, of uh, Martin Luther as well as many other uh, men of God who realized that uh, it was faith that made the difference. No matter what we did, no matter what we thought or how hard we worked or how we tried to figure it out, we're not acceptable to God by our way, but by his way. See, he lives, Jesus ever lives to make intercession for the saints of God. So then he goes in chapter 4. Let's get started here. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, see, the apostle Paul was Jewish, and he's talking to Jewish people here, our father, as pertaining to the flesh has found. Was Abraham justified by works? If he was, then he'd have a reason to glory, but not before God. See, because it would be his works. He could say, God, you have to accept me because I did what I'm supposed to do. I did what you wanted me to do. I pleased you and I met the standard. Here was the standard. Here was the, the call. Here was the provision and I met it. So I'm okay. He said it doesn't work that way. See, what, How does it work? The scripture said Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. See, if you work it doesn't mean we don't work for God. It doesn't mean we don't obey God. But if you work for the reward, it's a it's a debt thing. It's not grace. And let me tell you something, folks. You can't live without grace. There's not enough righteousness that you could ever generate. There's not enough obedience that you could ever perform. There's not enough that you could give to God to ever be acceptable. It takes an acceptable 
substitute for you and for me, and that's Jesus. He makes intercession for us. He says to the Father, accept us because of him. It's not that he doesn't have any value in who we are and what we become, but he wants us to realize that it's all about love. It's just as simple as what God expressed to that Jewish teacher in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him, there's faith, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To him that works not, in verse 5, but believes in him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. See, Happy, blessed are people whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute or attribute uh, sin. How are we delivered from sin and transgression and disobedience? By faith. Now, is this for Israel only? No. The, the faith was given to Abraham for righteousness. See? But it has nothing to do with the fact that he is going to be the father of the Jewish nation. This is going to be something that's going to come through him, but it's going to be the faith of Abraham. There is the natural line of Abraham. There's Israel that descends from him, and that's fine. See, But when, 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 when there was no Israel, see, he, was the begin, he was the beginning of Israel. See, He was the father of all them that would believe. He not only would be the father of all them that were going to be Israel, the natural progenitor, or the natural birth line, which is an important thing, but that wasn't enough. You had to be, you, you had to be a son of Abraham in the flesh to be Israel, but to be saved, you had to be a son of Abraham in, in faith, see, through the provision of God. And the righteousness of God would be given to you. See, so he is not just uh, the father of Israel, he's the father of all of us in the faith sense. Now, the, the only reason he spent so much time talking about Abraham here is because a lot of these Jewish people thought, well, I'm from Abraham, so I'm home free. Everything's fine. I belong to Israel, and, and I belong to Abraham, and I belong to the way of the Old Testament, and that's it. And Paul said, that's not the way it is. See, the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See, the promises that were given to Abraham and his people were not going to be made, made possible through the law, even though God gave the law, but it was a temporary thing. It was not going to be made possible through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. He said, if you are an heir of God through law, then faith is void, and the promise has no effect. But law works works the, the judgment of God. See, It is a faith that it might be by grace that the promise might be sure to all the seed. This is verse 16. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that which also is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. I have made you a father of many nations before him, whom he believed, even God, who made alive the dead and called those things which were not as though they were. You see, Abraham hoped against hope that he might become the father of many nations. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about 100 years old, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. See, they needed to have a child, uh, Abraham and Sarah's child, and, and, and she had never been able to have a child, and she was too old to have a child. But he didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Here's what faith is all about. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. What God had promised, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform, and it was counted for righteousness. Not for his sake alone, but for our sake as well. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now we're going to, we're going to bring this to a stopping point right here just by this great climax. There's more to say from chapter 4 and to go on, of course, and, we, and maybe some things already in the past. We just kind of jumped ahead a little bit here to chapter 4 and just said something from chapter 1 and chapter 3. But it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Oh my goodness, there's so much more coming that's good, but isn't that great right there? That should carry you through right there for, for a little while. Read that over again. In fact, let me read it over again before we pray. 
Therefore, we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have access by faith to this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hold on to that through faith. Not the amount of your faith, not the quality of your faith, but your faith. It's in Jesus. He's the quality. He's the quantity. He's the what you need. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Trust in him and he will make everything all right. Like we sing so many times in, in our church service. Everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. See, everything's going to be. I got a feeling. <laughs> everything's going to be all right. God bless you. Have a great week. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for these great words from the book of Romans. Thank you for Abraham. Thank you for his faith. Thank you for the apostle Paul and his teaching about faith through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Lift up these people tonight that have been with us. Encourage them by the power of faith, knowing that it is, it is not by works of righteousness that which we have done, but by faith and confidence in uh, the one you have provided, our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray his blessings upon us, and we ask it in his name. And everybody say a good amen. God bless you. Have a great week. <laughs>